But first, BBC One has a party to go to, where Val Dunican is our host. City sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laugh and people pass and meeting smile after smile. And on every street corner you hear silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling. Soon it will be Christmas Day Every street bright Christmas Eve night Shining red, blue and green As the shoppers rush round with their treasures Rain is falling, home is calling What a wonderful scene And above all the bustle you hear Silver bells Silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring. It's so hard to believe Here we are, it's Christmas Eve All the things you haven't got You're gonna have to leave Cause there's no more shopping days to Christmas But I've got my shopping done for Christmas Here's what I'm gonna do Take a peek, open a few These are special presents that I want to share with you Tonight is a special one for you and me And all my dearest friends are here as you can see How about an extra bit of Christmas cheer? Shall I open the box? Yeah! Let's see what I've got Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! That's what we like to hear. Well, it's very nice of you to join. I'd like to... By the way, have you got all your Christmas shopping finished? No! no. <laughs> well, you've had it, because tomorrow's Christmas Day, so you run out of time. <laughs> I would like to... I would like to welcome everybody at home who are joining us tonight, all of you people in the studio, but a special welcome from me to Ronnie Hislehurst and the orchestra and all our regular gang. 
We're looking forward to a nice evening's entertainment. You're going to meet my special guest as we go through the show. Right now, if you'll join me, I'd like you to say a big hello to Miss Janet Brown. Thank you. Well, a Merry Christmas to you, Janet. Thank you. Nice to you. Now, you. for a fellow, you know, yeah. on my own here all day, yeah. haven't I got my place spick and span? Yes. All my preparations done. Are you as well organized That's as that? That's pretty good, Val. But actually, I always like to be well ahead by Christmas Eve, so I would say we're okay. No problems. You're not doing too bad. No. You know, we make such a fuss over preparing Christmas for just a family. Yeah. So what it must be like for people sort of running hotels and got a lot of, you know, with staff problems. Oh, and I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Last Christmas morning, I had to go out. So I left Manuel to see to the Christmas lunch. <laughs> and he's never done it before. He comes from Barcelona, you know. <laughs> so I said, look here, Manuel. There's a turkey and the stuffing and the Christmas pudding. Well, when I came back, there were all the guests seated around the table. In comes Manuel with the turkey. What do you think he's done? What? He stuffed it with the Christmas pudding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I hope you've learned your lesson, Sybil. Oh, I shall look after everything myself. Sure. This year, I'm going to stuff the turkey with a lovely herbal stuffing. Oh, nice. Any particular herb? Basil. Basil. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, residents of Forty Thirds, you have been warned. Incidentally, <laughs> If, you, if you'd like to cancel your... Hey! Hello, Hello. 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 Hey. Nice to see you. You see who that is? You see who that is? It's the lovely Val. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, listen. Have you done all your cards and presents then? No, it's a funny you should say that, because I was just a few minutes... Just a few... I was just talking to Janet Brown. No. And I was telling her exactly how organised I was. And I'll tell you something else. I had a feeling you might pop in tonight, so I went out this afternoon and got you a little present. I got you a brand new set of hair rollers. You've been oh. to hear in about time. <laughs> You've got the touch of the blarney about you, all right, Val. Hey, I've got a surprise for you. I've got you a little present. Really? Oh, yes. What's that? I've got you a new wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> a wooden leg yeah. for me? Not for you, for your rocking chair. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Well, listen, can I, can I get back to Janet Brown yes, for a minute? Get back to me. I'm myself. Don't You're just myself. Janet Brown now. Yes. Well, t be honest with me now. Yeah. Have you got all your preparations finished now for Christmas? Not quite. <laughs> I've just got to hang something up at the end of my bed tonight. You have? A stocking? No, no, a pair of trousers. <laughs> my wet ball. That's a beautiful pair of trousers you're wearing. <laughs> what lovely material. You like that's more hair. More hair. Yeah. I wonder how many moors are running around bald just because of those trousers. <laughs> well, I tell you, Gladys, if if you play your cards right, you could have seven pairs of trousers on the end of your bed Ooh, tonight. That's fresh for you. That's fresh for me, <laughs> because I've got some friends of mine who have just come over specially to join us for tonight, over from Dublin. Uh, they're one of my own particular favourite groups, and I've said on a previous occasion, they managed to mix Irish traditional music and pop music in a very unique way, so I'd like all of you here tonight, and all of you at home, to just say a big welcome to Stockton's Wing. Thank you. <laughs> down the road to ruin With no rhyme or reason Still believing, still receiving He's building walls that keep on falling down Why wait? It's a parody, it's a mystery to me Why wait until tomorrow? Why wait at all? We must be one together To carry
the flames of burning pride We see the cloak of deception Cast into the ocean In the morning watch a new day rise Why wait until Doctor's Wing. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please now greet Mr. James Galway. Thank you. Wow. Well, I do know, James, that you have been shattered over the last, <coughs> of the last 24 hours. Because you've had a, a terrible tour around the world. I mean, you've been all over the place, haven't you? Yes, well, mainly America, actually. Now, Jimmy, I know that you live, you live over in Switzerland, don't you? Yeah. You live on, by this lovely lake over there, don't you? Yeah, in Lucerne. And so you're going to go back there and see your children, join your children for Christmas. So what will you be doing? Jimmy tells me you have to go down by the lake to buy a Christmas tree. Do you have to do that? Yes, all the farmers bring Christmas trees down along the lake, and we go along and look at them and say that. Jenny says, oh, I want that one. Lily said, I want that one. Patrick said, I want this one. So you end up nearly buying three. But last year I bought one Christmas tree that was the worst I ever bought, and I let the kids choose it. <laughs> And when I got it home, it was so wiggly, it wouldn't stand up straight, it wouldn't balance. So I, I ended up nailing it to the roof and tying it to the wall. <laughs> various vantage point to stop from falling over. I suppose, Jimmy, you know, your, your, your children are getting big now, aren't they? They're, they're growing up, as indeed my, my girls are young ladies now. And, you know, the one thing that doesn't change at Christmas, I suppose, is children. And I've sung so many songs about children over the years. And one in particular I would like to sing now, that for a very special reason. A long time ago, one of the things that I used to do to make a few quid, you know what the hard times are like? Yes, do I do. I used to make what they call <laughs> demonstration records. You know, somebody would give me five pounds to record a song that they'd written so they could send it to somebody famous. And a chap came one day with this little song and asked me to sing it because he wanted to send it to Maurice Chevalier, who was making an album of children's songs. So I recorded this. He gave me five pounds. He sent it off to Maurice Chevalier, who incidentally didn't record the song, sent it back. And the guy kept it in his office for years. And then I started to make records. And you know, this fellow had the cheek to send me my own demo, Jimmy. <laughs> he did, honestly. He sent me my me, And if it wasn't for the fact that when I listened and the singing was so fantastic, that's what, that's what made me... <laughs> so after all these songs, I'd like to sing it again. A delightful little song called Mysterious People. Children are people who live in a land made of raindrops and puddles and pebbles and streams, solemnly watching a twig as it sails on a clear crystal pool to an island of dreams. There go a pair who have just built a city of mud, and it's real. They know that mud doesn't look very but ooh, how it feels. This little boy greets the snow with a smile. And that little girl has discovered an isle made up of pillows. One little fellow is friends with the wind in the willows all of them children all are mysterious people i can remember when i was a boy that my bed was a ship that i sailed through the night and i remember the world as a place that was eager to 
loving and shining and bright. But where is the boy who was friends with the rainbow and once rode upon? Oh, where is that shy and mysterious person? Oh, where have I gone? I can remember I once said my prayer. But now I stand by while my children say this, watching them need. And I could cry that one day they'll forget all that they're feeling. Oh, what a shame that our children must grow into people. Like me, Jimmy, you were brought up in Ireland, of course, and it would be a lovely story, really, for the press if you were to say that one morning you got up and your dad had put a tin whistle in your stocking and you started to play it and immediately you became a genius. <laughs> and you had done all that. <laughs> now, is that's not true, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it would be lovely, as I said. Did you play a tin whistle when you were very young? I did, yes. Was it the first instrument you played, really? Well, the first instrument I played was my dad's flute, but he didn't approve of that, so he got his tin whistle. Oh, your dad was a flute player, wasn't he? Yeah. I, I didn't quite realize. Now, the first instrument I was given, ladies and gentlemen, when I was a little lad, is one of these. Now, do you know what it is? Juice harp. It's a juice harp. Now, I was given one of these, as I say, and a lot of people think you can't get a tune out of these, actually, but you can. You can play things. So I'm going to play a little tune, Jimmy, and as it happened, now, when, my, when I got this in my Christmas stocking, my dad put the music in as well, and he put on a just in case you ever work with James Galway. Yeah. You can have that. <laughs> you know. And so if you get your tin whistle out, We'll play okay. this little thing together. Can I have a little vamp in E flat, Roger? A little bit brighter. Well, Jimmy, forget about the tin whistle for the moment. You can leave that over here. Okay. You get your Rolls Royce. Now, one of the things you have done recently is you made an absolutely beautiful album of the music of Kachaturian, didn't you? Yes, sir. And I'd like you to play something for that. Will you give us your beautiful rendition of the Sabre Dance? So okay. You get your th so, ladies and gentlemen, once again, will you say welcome to Mr. James Galway? <laughs>
Nell Milligan had an enormous farm and being a widow of notable charm, three gentlemen call her from morning to night were fighting each other for blarney. The first was a teacher called Ali O'Byrne, the second a clergyman willing to turn. And both of them stuck in each other and also a guard from Dunnigan's army. Gentleman down to his toes and given to use the most beautiful prose, describing the love of his million rose every time that he'd see her out walking. Foss at the path would often excuse the use of the bottle she'd sometimes abuse. Gather McGrath was a broth of a boy who never came home till the morning. How will I make me mind up now? How will I choose and what'll I do now? How will I make me mind up now? What'll I do at all? Oh, Nell Milligan told us, look at them running and where will the scrape and three She's only hoodwinking them all. But now he's in hock. The second the clergyman, now he's defrocked. And Garda McGrath is decidedly crocked from never going home till the morning. thanks to Stockton's Wing. Well, this surely is a time, you know, for getting together with old friends that you haven't seen for quite some time. My final guest tonight is truly an old friend to many, many of us. He's given us such pleasure over the years that I feel quite sure at home you're going to open your doors wide to say a big Christmas hello to Mr. Pat Boone. Thank you. <laughs>
Bring it back, little tree All the love that we share Fill my heart Till this loneliness ends Now as I gaze At my little green tree All the wonders of Christmas Seem new And my little green tree Will be waiting with me Until we share our Christmas With you Bring them back, little tree Let me live them again Let me hear the sweet laughter Of friends Bring it back little tree all the love that we shared fill my heart till this loneliness ends now as i gaze at my little green tree all the wonders of christmas seem new And my little green tree will be waiting with me until we share our Christmas with you. Until we share our Christmas with you. It's lovely to see you again. It's been, what, about four years since it you joined It has been, and I'm way too long. And I really appreciate your inviting me to your party. It's been a great really pleasure. Is. It's lovely to see you in this country. I wish you'd come more often. I really should. Now, you wrote that little song, by the way, didn't you, that Christmas Yes, thing? yes, I did. And I when did you write that? It was about uh, 1960 or so. If I give you five pounds, will you make me a demo? I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to send it to? You know. but I'll send it to myself. Okay. You know, <laughs> I, we tried to make you feel at home, but we got a couple of nice girls to sit there, because he's got a house full of girls, this fellow. Oh, what you, beautiful yeah. party favors. May I take them home? Yes, please do. Yes. Okay, please good. Do <laughs> they'd, they'd be right at home yeah. at my house. You've got what, four daughters? Four daughters you? and four granddaughters and four grandsons. And three more coming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so My youngest daughter's expecting twins in oh, March. How nice. Yeah. So by next year, you'll have 11 grandchildren. Who knows? Maybe a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> That's <lovely. laughs> And it's easy. I'm just delegating the authority now. Oh, it's wonderful. Very Pat told on. me. Pat told me the most delightful thing. I suppose all of us who have children should do this, really. And he told, what did you start? About what? 1950 odd, didn't you? It was uh, about 56, just before I, I came to England my first time. And I bought a little 16 millimeter camera and began to record our Christmases. It, was, it happened to be at Christmas time. And so I started something then I do every year, ever since then. Uh, that Christmas, of course, I had my four little daughters, just uh, only three and a half years apart, just boop, 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 mm -hmm. just little stair steps. Had them stand outside the, the living room door. I started on the Christmas tree and recorded the tree and all the presents and the stockings by the fireplace, panned across to the door, finally said, okay, girls, you can come in. <laughs> the door opened, and in they came, you know, like little, little dolls, and I recorded them as they went to the stockings first and then to the mm -hmm. presents. I've done that now for 25 years. Where the girls have grown right up, and now they're bringing their children, children in, and they're starting to grow up, too. So you, you can edit them all together and then run it all up as and one And I can phase. bore everybody in the <laughs> world. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll look like one of those wonderful pictures you see nowadays on these nature films where they show a flower opening up, and they, That's they, right. they, they, they're on the film fast, and they grow, <laughs> the flower comes out, and it looks magnificent. Yes, as well. and I just watch them grow up. Yeah. Now, a lot of people in, in America, in the entertainment world, Pat, have become very associated with politics over the years. Have you ever been that way inclined at all? 
I have refused to run for president. You have? Yes, I have. <laughs> well done. I well have. done. <laughs> but I have sung for a great... Well, in you, fact, all of them since... Uh, since President Eisenhower. You've met all the presidents. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I mention that, actually, is because you're in for a big treat tonight, because while you're in this country, a very rare, very rare thing to happen. Because is Ron tonight, here? No, 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 Ronnie's not here, but his friend is. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome our Prime Minister. Thank you. Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice of you to call. Thank you. Yes. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation about Christmas party games. Yes. We do so enjoy them. Do you know, we always play board games when we spend Christmas at my country residence. Oh, drafts? No, no, checkers. <laughs> oh, 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 I see what you mean. But one thing I'm sure all these people here and the people at home would love yes. to know is what happens in Parliament at Christmas? Do you have a party like everybody else? Oh, yeah. indeed we do. <laughs> 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 We're not serious all the time, you know. No, we have some splendid party games. There's one in particular we all do so enjoy. Ten of us all go into a room with Geoffrey Howe, and then everyone has to guess who he is. <laughs> What do you do? What, what do I do? Yes. Well, I, do I sing. I mean, I sing on television quite a lot. Really? Yes. Oh, well, that can't be helped. <laughs> <laughs> what I was thinking is this might be your big chance, because I have here a carol, well, actually a kind of singing telegram that I have written for the House of Commons, so that they will know I have a good sense oh, of humor. very nice. Now, you know, I always like to help small businesses, such as yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this could be... <laughs> Do stop laughing at you. <laughs> this could be your big opportunity. You, you mean you want me to sing this song on television with you? Well, now, Mr. Donegan, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that I can make you a star. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. But it's called Wake Up, Ye Dozy Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hazelnut. <laughs> Do pay attention. Just, <laughs> just start playing your introduction, and I'll vamp till you're ready. <laughs> Wake up, ye dozy gentlemen, this is your leader now. And sleeping in her presence is a thing she won't allow. They're still asleep, I wonder why. Oh yes, there's Geoffrey Howe. <laughs> oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. There's Nigel Lawson over there. He thinks he's Santa Claus. He's giving everything away to a thunderous applause. The trouble is that what he gives you is already yours. <laughs> oh, tidings of comfort and joy. There's David Owen coming in. He's such a silly ass. Some people think he talks too much. He won't shut up, alas. I'd really like to sell him off and call him British Gas. <laughs> oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now, Maggie, she demands respect from men like David Steele. And when Neil Kinnock comes to call, he's quickly brought to heel. He says, oh, Maggie, I reply, oh, please don't stand up, kneel. <laughs> oh, tidings of comfort and joy. 
Wake up, ye dozy gentlemen. I'm not retiring yet. <laughs> if we threw water over them, they'd soon wake up, I'll bet. But then I'd end up with a party that was sopping wet. <laughs> oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, gifts we bring to set before the king shall I play for you on my drum this is Christmas this is
Pat. Thanks once again to Pat Boone. Uh, Christmas is drawing nearer and nearer, I'm very pleased to say. So it only remains for me to wish you a very, very happy festive season. And let's all hope that 1986 is going to be a change for the good all over the world. I can't think of a nicer song to leave you with than this one. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he and the soul felt his word. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices as yonder breaks a new and glorious world. For Thank you.